Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon again bringing you more lore from the plane of Amonkhet. In an earlier video, I talked about the angels on this desert world, but didn't really go past how they're depicted as male figures rather than female, which has been more traditional in Magic the Gathering. So this time around, I'm not gonna harp on that too much, and we'll talk more about how the race is currently seen on a world corrupted by Bolas. Oh, and for good measure, let's examine the demons here as well, because why not, right? Angels, demons, Amonkhet, they all just go together perfectly. The angels on Amonkhet were once like angels on other planes, probably. Staunch defenders of justice and the weak, but we just don't know for sure. No information on angels exists from a time before the coming of Bolas, and what we're left with are his twisted representation of these once holy creatures. It's safe to say they once served the gods, but it's also clear to say that they now serve only the god pharaoh. When Bolas arrived on Amonkhet, he basically mind controlled the entire damn plane. From gods to beasts with the exception of the Sphinx, who somehow are too smart for Bolas to mind wipe. Okay? Everyone was experiencing Bolas fever. It was like the British invasion, but with manipulation and a lot more destruction. The angels and demons of this world were of no exception, and the dragon's influence changed more than just their minds. Under the reign of Bolas, both angels and demons became physically disfigured. Their arms and legs grew in length, giving them a more lanky appearance. Long claws and horns spouted on the demons, mirroring their new lord, while the wings of the angels grew black feathers. These were the markings of the god pharaoh, like a uniform worn by the agents of Bolas on Amonkhet. Yet Bolas doesn't make agents just for the hell of it, the angels and demons have a purpose in his grand scheme. Understanding minds and human thought, Bolas knew that his fake history for Amonkhet wouldn't be enough for some of this world's residents. There would always be dissenters. Dissenters, if given the chance, could undo his whole plan while he was away. So, the angels would serve as his agents in his absence, devoting their existence to their duty. They use a supernatural sense to detect the presence of dissenters. Their hooked staves capture these people and bring them to the god pharaoh's justice, binding them to sarcophagi, known as the tombs of disgrace, and exposing them to ridicule from other citizens in the display of doubt. After a day of disgrace, the angels deliver the dissenters out far into the wastes, where they'll die and become shambling zombies by the curse of wandering. One of the worst fates on Amonkhet. As such, dissenters are rare on Amonkhet, at least before Bolas showed his true colors. Most people trusted the gods and wanted to enter eternal paradise, and the only way to achieve that was through the trials. Dissenters didn't refute the visible gods or the afterlife, but rather the trials and the unknown god pharaoh. They were the cowardice and righteous, refusing to either fight, die, or kill others in the trials. Yet, no matter the reason of grievance, their fates were all the same. In his quest to quell dissenters, Bolas has also controlled the demons of Amonkhet, though they serve a slightly different role. Demons are found outside the protective Hekma, in a region known as Infer, a desolate waste even sandier than the normal wastes. The angels bring the worst dissenters there, dropping them to a death far worse than mere dehydration. Since they're not allowed into the city, Bolas uses them to reinforce the fears and motivations which drives the people to produce his perfect eternal army. In this, Amonkhet is the only plane where angels and demons serve the same purpose, beings of both good and evil corrupted by Nicobolus for his own intentions. And there you go guys, the full story of the cooperative nature of angels and demons on Amonkhet. It shows us that Bolas is strong enough to corrupt these powerful beings, minus the Sphinx of course, which is kinda scary. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about angels and demons in the comments below. If you want to learn more about a specific Magic the Gathering topic, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Facebook where I run polls where you guys get to pick the next topic of the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to support the Ether Hub here on YouTube. As always, everyone, I'll see you next time here on the Ether Hub.